Methane SIBO can be really difficult to treat, so today I'm updating one of my older videos that was very popular and giving you some new guidelines on how to treat methane SIBO. Hi, I'm Dr. Shelley Meyer. Welcome to my channel. I'm so glad you're here. If you're coming back, thanks so much for your support. If you're new here, thank you for joining me. I talk about functional medicine. I am a registered dietitian, functional medicine, and family doctor. I do a lot of gut health information here. I would love it if you could like and share and subscribe to and hit the bell to be notified and subscribe to the channel so that it could continue to grow and I could continue to provide this information. But thanks so much for joining me today. As I said in the intro, we are going to talk about methane SIBO today. So I'm going to do a kind of an overview because this is the first in a big series that I'm doing on SIBO. Um, and I'm going to do an overview a little bit about what SIBO is, but stay tuned to the end. We're going to be very specific to methane SIBO and options for treatment. So um, SIBO it stands for small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. And what is that? So that is an overgrowth of bacteria in the small intestine, which is basically um, what attaches to the stomach and it's before it it's the area of intestine before you get to the large intestine, which then does the rest of the, the digestion and pushing um, your food out through your bowel movements. So there is a difference between dysbiosis in the microbiome that I've talked about a lot on this channel and small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Now, I, for a while in my practice, I have treated um, what we call the lower intestinal bacterial overgrowth or dysbiosis. Um, to try and cover also small intestinal bacteria overgrowth without doing a lot of SIBO testing. But I've changed my tune on that more recently after doing some advanced SIBO training with Dr. Allison Seibecker, um, who is the expert, a naturopath um, expert in SIBO, one of the experts in SIBO. So what I am doing now is recommending that if my patients can swing it as far as budget goes, that they could do, they should do a microbiome test and a small uh, SIBO test um, because we need to kind of know what both. We need to know what is going on. So we need to know is there imbalance in the lower intestine and is there imbalance in the upper intestine. With SIBO, we have I've learned through the years that yes, some people will respond with a dysbiosis treatment plan, that 5R treatment plan that I've talked about a lot that the IFM came up with and I've mentioned it in my other videos so you can check those out. A lot of people will respond with their abdominal issues and their gut issues to that 5R program, but then some people will be recurrent. They'll have issues that respond at first and then they come back, the issues, or they come back worse or they're just recurrent quite often. And that is where a SIBO test is very effective because we know that two thirds of people with SIBO um, have, are, are chronic and they will have recurrences, whereas one third will, you know, maybe even do that dysbiosis treatment and they'll get better, or, you know, we'll do the SIBO treatment and they'll get better, but two thirds have recurrences. So we really have to talk about, you know, the difference between the treatment with dysbiosis and SIBO and how to approach a SIBO patient differently. So in order to do that, we need to know if you have SIBO or not. So let's talk about the symptoms of SIBO. They can include the traditional things we think of when there's gut problems, bloating, pain, diarrhea, um, constipation, reflux or acid stomach or um, GERD kind of reflux, nausea, but they can also include anxiety, brain fog, depression, fatigue, weight loss. I've even seen weight gain when people have SIBO. The weight loss tends to more happen if people just, their diet is so limited and, they, and they're just malabsorbing everything. So it's not a healthy kind of weight loss. So how do we know the different, well, I already talked about this a little bit. The difference between dysbiosis is we do a stool test ideally and look at the microbiome. And to do SIBO testing, we do a breath test. I'm going to talk more about that in the series um, coming up, but that is the gold standard for testing for SIBO. We have to test the breath gases in response to a certain amount of a substrate, which is usually a, a carbohydrate, a, like sugar of some sort or lactose that they drink, and then they um, will breathe into you will breathe into a bag, and then that's the SIBO test. So now we are talking specifically about methane SIBO. That was a very popular video I had back in 2019, I think. Um, and it's still a big issue I see a lot in my practice. So the difference between methane SIBO and hydrogen SIBO, traditionally with methane SIBO, we will see um, constipation predominant, and with hydrogen SIBO, we'll see diarrhea predominant. Now, are there people with both? Yes, and sometimes are there people with 
you know, both symptoms and maybe they just have one type of gas or are there people in their um, SIBO test or are there people with both symptoms that um, have a mixed picture of methane and hydrogen? Yes and yes, <laughs> there can be either. You could be methane and still have a little bit of diarrhea or you could be hydrogen and still have a little um, bit of constipation. So that's where the testing is really important because it can tell us if your methane gas is high or if your hydrogen gas is high. Or the third option, which is hydrogen sulfide. A newer thing that we, not newer, but one that we didn't have a direct test for that we do now. And there are some markers on regular SIBO tests that we can look for to see if your hydrogen sulfide SIBO. So there's some different types. There's some signs or symptoms that may show up if you are hydrogen sulfide, the, the more unique kind of SIBO or the one that is a little bit harder to treat is trickier that we have to do a different protocol for, um, is that you might have some bladder irritation. So I am testing my um, patients, especially women that will have interstitial cystitis or irritated bladder. Um, we will check if we can for hydrogen sulfide SIBO or treat for that. Um, they can be more toxic appearing if you have hydrogen sulfide SIBO. So I'm going to talk about this more later, but I'm just going to go over the overview. They may just appear more sick. Um, they do feel worse sometimes with Epsom salt baths. Um, they have worse food intolerances sometimes. They have a sulfur smelling gas sometimes, and they tend to be a lot of gas and diarrhea, but so does hydrogen um, SIBO. So that's where the testing is important. Um, and then some signs, some physical signs that you could have SIBO are, those are different from symptoms, is you're just malabsorbing, like your vitamin D is tanked and it hasn't always been tanked, um, because vitamin D can be tanked from genetics, like I was saying in my short video I already put out, but it, if it's tanked and, and it's more recent, that could be from, um, from SIBO. And you could have others, vitamin A, um, vitamin K, you know, your B vitamins even potentially. So malabsorption symptoms, leaky gut um, could also be a sign of SIBO. So that can be any of the above that I talked about before, headache and, and headache joints, um, skin breakouts, uh, whether it be eczema, psoriasis, um, acne, those kind of things. Um, brain fog is a big one with leaky gut. So those can, and then, and then and SIBO also can coexist with, like I said, rosacea and psoriasis, restless leg syndrome. Um, it could coexist with rheumatoid arthritis or some other autoimmune diseases, and those could be signs of leaky gut. So those are signs you may have it. So before we jump straight into the methane part of it, um, make sure if you are just curious about what signs you're having and, and how to recognize what might be going on in your gut and what... A, potential treatment approaches you could take, check out my Trust Your Guts um, course. It is discounted. Like I've said, it's on Udemy now. I have a link for it. You follow that link in the description and you get that discount. And then I will have, also have a free PDF with 10 tips to beat SIBO. So be sure to check out my free PDF. You have to sign up for my email list. I don't spam you with email. Don't worry. So then let's talk about the treatment specifically for methane SIBO. I'm not going to go over today how you diagnose methane SIBO other than, you know, doing the breath test. But I can in the future do a video on what the breath test would look like with SIBO. I have a new device I'm really excited about that I want to share with you that I'm going to unbox and, and, and do in a video here shortly. Um, so if you have methane SIBO or hydrogen sulfide SIBO or hydrogen SIBO, you could do an elemental diet as a treatment. That is rough. Um, you don't eat real food. Um, it's generally, you know, two weeks, maybe four weeks for the elemental diet. There are elemental diet formulas. They get really expensive. Um, Integrative Therapeutics, one of the supplement companies I use and is on my discount dispensary that there are links to in the description. They have the elemental diet option, so you can check that out if you'd rather just go with diet. Um, and you, there, there is a self um, made elemental diet that I can, I will be posting about in a SIBO guide that I'm producing. Um, and that is less expensive than the prepared type. It's just kind of more difficult to, to do, but it's, it's hard to do an elemental diet, but it can be one of the treatment plans. Um, you could also do an antibiotic called Rifaximin, very expensive in the U S you can get it in other countries, um, cheaper because our drug manufacturers tend to have the hold on the, the economy here. So um, at least the medical pharmaceutical economy and we can't afford it all the times. And uh, 
we don't have a lot of good options if your insurance doesn't cover it or if you don't have insurance for your medications. But one option is I do go to Mark's Marine um, in Canada and you need to be careful um, and look and make sure you're ordering. And when you're ordering from Canada, you're ordering from a good company and Mark's Marine does have options for Rifaximin. I don't have any connection to them. I've just used them for people that can't afford SIBO. So I can't guarantee what you're going to get. It's just that is one of the companies with the best options for SIBO. And always discuss anything I'm saying with your provider. You do not want to go rogue and just do your own treatments without doing any kind of testing or talking to your provider. I don't know you personally. This can't be considered medical advice. It's just information that I'm trying to share to help people hopefully feel better and have better conversations with their healthcare providers. So you can do the Rifaximin. Typically, when you um, have methane SIBO, you want to combine that rifaximin with neomycin. Now, I don't love neomycin as an antibiotic. It's rifaximin is a good antibiotic because it's just specifically for SIBO. It's not going to disrupt the microbiome, but neomycin can a little bit, but it can also make a big difference in treating the methane SIBO, and it is just for two weeks, so we can... If you're working with a provider, um, you can work on the microbiome after repairing the SIBO, but this will help take care of the SIBO. So it's, and to, more information about dosing and everything, you can talk with your provider. I also will have some information in um, the mini course I'll be, or guide I'll be putting together soon. Um, and, you know, there'll be a disclaimer that you do have to discuss any changes with your provider. So you could also do rifaximin with allicin, which is an, a garlic extract. So if you handle garlic, okay. If you don't handle gar garlic, okay, because of the fermenting part of it, you may still handle allicin, okay? It depends. Um, most people do. So you would need a higher dose. Don't pay attention to the dose that's on the label. You need something like Alamax, which is very expensive, um, but very good for treating SIBO because you would need like a six pill a day version of that. Um, and that is, I'll put some links down below. You can get it on Amazon yourself, but do talk to your provider about it. And you can get it on, I think, on our, our dispensary also, and there is a, a discount there. So that's an option, combining the allicin with the rifaximin, or you can combine allicin with a high-dose berberine. Now, berberine I've talked about in my videos. I really like it for blood sugar management, and it can help the gut as well. Um, it can help blood um, or cholesterol also, but when we're doing a gut focused berberine for SIBA. We want to do super high dose. So it'd be like, you know, I think three times the dose that I had recommended in my other videos. So that's, you know, three pills, three times a day often. So it's quite a lot. You'd have to invest a bit. When you're doing the antibiotic prescription, the rifaximin and the neomycin, you would just do that for two weeks. When you're doing the herbal antibiotics, which would be the allicin, the um, berberine, um, you, or Atrantil is an option, um, that's an herbal blend. Those you want to do for a full four weeks. So that brings me to my next option, which is um, sometimes people do fine with Allison on its own at that high dose, or Atrantil, which is a blend of horse chestnut and, um, oh, why am I blinking? I will put the ingredients here in the, in the video. Um, but it really good for bloating and methane dominant SIBO, and I talked about that in my original video in 2019. Um, and then you can buy that with Allison. You do a higher dose than what the, you do the high dose that the label says um, on the Atrantil plus the high dose Allison all for two weeks. I mean, four weeks, sorry. Um, so you want to be sure you're going high enough dose because a lot, oftentimes when I'm treating dysbiosis in the lower intestine, you do that full five hour approach and your antibacterial part of it doesn't have to be as high dose. But for SIBO, you kind of have to go in guns a blazing and, and get that taken care of. You also want to be sure that you get to the root cause. So I have a future video coming up on that. I will have the guide coming up. I do have the 10 tips free PDF. So look at that um, if you want to look at root cause because there can be structural past surgeries can be a cause, um, Parkinson's disease, Ehlers-Danlos, lots of um, have lots of causes that surprisingly we don't all have SIBO because there's so many causes. So you want to get to do whatever you can for that root cause. There's only certain things you can control, but know if you have one of these conditions that you may have recurrent SIBO and may have to repeat some of these treatments. Um, even if they're effective the first time, you may have to repeat them again later. But I'm, I'm going to have some steps and some future videos on 
how to maybe delay that time, not have to repeat them so quickly. And then I, in my um, upcoming video, I will be talking about the SIBO diet and how it varies a little bit from some of the other um, gut-based diets that I've talked about. So stay tuned for that. So, thanks so much for joining me. I will see you next time. I'll have shorts coming out with little you know, bits of this information too. So look out for those. Please like and subscribe so we can keep the channel going. And I will see you next time.